Welcome, sports fans. Thank you for joining us. It's the NBA on 2K Sports. With Grant Hill and Steve Smith, I'm Brian Anderson. Allie LaForce is our reporter. Hey, Allie. Tobias Harris is the straw that stirs the drink in Philly, if you will. He said, quote, I see myself as the connector here, bringing guys together. I've been around the game a minute. I know how to communicate with different personalities. I'm here for one reason only, to help this team get to the championship. Guys, back to you. All right, Allie, good stuff there. Thank you. And a chance now to take a look at some numbers for DeLon Wright. He's been really dialed in from deep during these last five games, looking assertive and in control every time he rises up to shoot from beyond the three-point line. And it's been fun to watch. A look at the 76ers starting group. Harris and Embiid make up the front court. Ben Simmons is out there with Matisse Thybul. And it's Green in at the three slot. And for Detroit, Blake Griffin out there with Jeremy Grant. Then it's Mason Plumley. Then there's Derrick Rose. And it's Jackson in at the shooting guard position. Oh, rarity tonight, Smitty. Both teams tonight run their offenses through the post. B.A., that equals physical basketball tonight. I'm excited. The game will be played in the trenches. And that means the team that can rebound go. and that can hit open shots wins this game. So Philadelphia will get the first possession. Now Simmons, a go-to option for this team. He puts up nearly 17 a game. Knocked away. Here's Rose. Pass to Griffin. They double him with Harris. Launches it. Rose can't connect. Philadelphia with the ball. And here's Simmons. And here's Harris. Outside Thibel. And Embiid gets the double team. Outside Simmons. Shot clock at five. He takes it in. And slammed up by Simmons. <laughs> I'll tell you, those finishes are always extra special when they come from your point guard. Oh, forget about his passing. Can we see more dunking? It just shows you the versatility. This guy can do a lot of different things for you. Woo! Wee! And the Pistons with possession here. Following the score by Philadelphia. Okay, that's frustrating. We work hard to get these open looks. You know he liked that one back. Pass to Harris. Fires from deep. Rebounded by the Pistons. They faced off right here last time they met. But the home club just couldn't pull out the win. Today's game is about effort and energy. They got crushed on the glass the last time these teams played. You don't have that one guy who gets you 10 plus boards every night. You just have to send more guys to the glass. Now here's Simmons. Turned in an outstanding game against Washington. Pass to Embiid. Outside Simmons. Here's Harris. He's checked by Plumley. From deep, here's Simmons. It's rebounded by Gray. Detroit has gone over three from downtown. Here's Rose. Now, if you're just tuning in, we played about two and a half minutes here in the first. So much of rebound is about positioning, effort, no lack of it right there. Now here's Simmons. Green, the pass to Simmons. For three, here's Harris. Offensive rebound. And that one's good. A nice job on the glass as they picked up two on the second effort. We all know rebounding is about effort. Embiid is showing lots of it. I love how he's unwilling to give up on the play. Time called here. The Pistons decide to talk it over. Well, they put up a nice win against Chicago last time out.
selective while attacking the rim. And in the end, being available is probably Yeah, I heard those criticisms, but I like. I think a lot just wanted to see Derrick Rose play, and you had compassion for him. From the floor, shaky start to the wing, right side. Blake has increased his rank. Plumley on him. Guarded by Rose. If you give him room, he's gonna score the ball. The Pistons trailing. Rose outside. To the left wing. Now Rose against Chicago. Him shots in his spots. That's understanding your personnel. Jackson. Graham, left side. Back to Jackson. I love the way of Griffin. On the prize, going after the rim is either you're gonna dunk it or you're gonna foul it. The issues have hampered Blake Griffin in recent seasons. The question is, can he continue to be an All Star? On Joel Embiid. All right, Grant, all-star break right around the corner. You were a seven-time all-star, but tell me, how special was that first one? You know, B.A., it's just an incredible feeling and recognition to your first all-star game, something you've worked hard for, you dreamed about, and to finally be in the rarefied air with all the other great players in the league celebrating the NBA during all-star weekend. What an honor. I was fortunate it happened in my rookie year. And I was in awe of all of the greats and the legends that were on the team with me. So that first time, wow, what a special accomplishment for any player selected to the All-Star team. Good on both. Side. Again, Philadelphia. And here's Wright. He had a big outing in that Bulls game as well. Down low. Here's Okafor. 11 feet out and he hits it. Ooh, tough to stop once he gets inside. He's a beast. On the way, Milton. Pass to Howard. Nice finish from the low block. That one's good. Howard's got six points. And Detroit is shooting. Now Graham. And count that. Two points and a chance for one more at the line. Terrific play. This is why you run your offense through him and live with the results.
Now here's Milton. How quiet so far offensively. Searching for his first points of the game. And the Pistons with possession here. Seven point differential. Right outside. Pass to Graham. Back to right. From deep. It's hauled in by the Sixers. They defeated Washington in their last game. They really had a strong night shooting the basketball. They got hot and stayed hot. They were very patient, and that was the difference. It's hard to be patient, I know, but look at the outcome they had. Now, here is Howard. For three, Maxi Knocks it loose. The Pistons on offense. They trail by seven. Pass to Bay. And there's 138 left in the opening quarter. Grant with it. To the left side wing. Down to five on the shot clock. They set the pick. Driving inside. And the basket by Mikhailu. That's a well-timed, well-coordinated play. Comes right off the pick for the lay. Here's Maxi. Well, he hasn't put up any points yet in this one. Here's Howard. It's rebounded by Grant. Second to go. Now he's one for two. And their offensive game plan is clear. Get it inside. Here's Maxi. On the take. Here's Curry. Count it. One for one to start the game. Allowing any room to operate, you know he's going to be aggressive. Right outside. Pass to Bay. Banked it in off the glass. Yeah, their defense is starting to wear down. That's three straight buckets at the rim. The Sixers leading. There's 25 seconds left to play in the first. Here's Milton. And he was fouled while in the act of shooting, so he'll take two free throws. The defense there doing whatever they can to protect the rim. Pistons with possession here. Here's right. Oh, he got it up in time, but it wouldn't fall for him. So at the end of one quarter of play, still a close game. Sixers ahead, up by three. And we'll bring you the start of quarter number two when we return. Chatting earlier with Ben Simmons, he addressed the scrutiny that players have to deal with on a daily basis. 
For me, it, it comes with blocking criticism from people I don't really need to hear from. You know, I don't mind. Everyone has their opinion. Everyone's going to say something, um, which is fine. But at the same time, I got to worry about, you know, what I need to focus on. And with social media now, blocking out the noise has become harder than ever. <laughs> the truth is, people like to criticize others, B.A. We should really be celebrating what Simmons has accomplished at a very young age. And some good action in the books as we get back to a game that's been pretty close so far here. All right, guys, what's your take on the Sixers so far? Well, it looks like hitting the boards hard was an emphasis of their attack. They knew how valuable it was to do so. They have the guys to do it. Play to your strengths, and they can make up for some of your weaknesses. And the 76ers, looking at who they've got. They've got Joel Embiid. Danny Green is out there with Dwight Howard. Then there's Furkan Korkmaz, and it's Simmons in at the point guard position. Free throw drops for Embiid. Grant, you and Scottie Pippen were two of the pioneers for the point forward role. Now almost every team is looking for that guy. NBA, it seems like every team has that guy. <laughs> and it speaks to how the game has changed and grown through the years. See, now in this era of positionless basketball, you need players who are multidimensional, players who are versatile, players who can dribble, pass, shoot. They can play multiple positions on defense. That's what's needed in today's game for success. So yes, you see a lot of that on teams throughout the NBA. Now here's Plumlee. What? No scoring yet from him, but that's likely to change. Just five on the clock. There's Jackson with the three. The rebound by Ben Simmons. I know he's on a cold streak. But he can't let that get in his head. And his rhythm, it's been way off. The goal now might be to get him something easy at the rim so he can just see the ball go in through the net, and that helps. Detroit has gone over two from outside in the second quarter. There's Jackson with the three. Howard grabs the miss. Howard's got rebound number seven tonight. He's been scoreless for a while now. They're still trailing here. They might want to move to some other options offensively. Back to Simmons. We're about a minute and a half into the second quarter. Count it. His third and five attempts. Back in the day, someone would have blocked him out, but times have changed. Here's Rose. He's been an important part of this offense, averaging around 22 points a game. Right on the left side. Oh, Simmons with the block. We're now about two minutes into the second quarter. Here's Embiid. Yes. And that's Simmons with the assist. And now a 9.76ers lead. We've seen that more than once today. An effortless basket inside. Let's go now to the sideline and catch up with Ali LaForce. Pistons ownership has set the goal to always field a competitive team. Coach Dwayne Casey has said that effort and togetherness are the bars he measures the team by. Win, lose, or draw. But guys, if the team struggles drawing attendance, that need to win games year in and year out will remain. All right, Allie, thank you. Now here's Wright. Pass to Rose. Wright outside. Back to Rose. Another miss. Boy, they're in a funk right now. Part of why they have this lead, they're doing the little things out there. Now Simmons. Howard and Blake Griffin is going to pick up the foul. That's his first foul. During presence of Danny Green, keeping his eyes up, finding his teammate wide open.
participate in this year's dunk contest. Always an exciting event. Yeah, year after year, these guys find new ways to innovate and stun the judges. It's remarkable stuff. And you look at Simmons, and I could see him moving even higher up in the ranks. He's certainly a talented guy up in the air. He is for sure, but this list is just packed with real aerial artists. This dunk contest is really going to be something special. And as All-Star Weekend gets closer, we'll of course update you on how things are looking. But this year already promises plenty of standout performances. Yeah, this is going to be a dunk contest you don't want to miss. And they're up considerably because of their efforts on the glass. And we really don't see too many big men in today's game to handle the basketball as much as Blake Griffin. You know, whether he's posting up or running pick and rolls, he's just so comfortable with the ball in his hands. Here's Pumley. The Sixers getting their last shot to go. Rose outside. They need this. Pass to Plumley. Over Embiid. Plumley, no good. And with Griffin's strength and his ball handling ability, man, is it tough to keep him at bay? They're tough indeed, B.A. Yeah. I mean, he really has that attack mentality. If he can't get by you, he'll go through you on his way to the rim. Now here's Simmons. This is the most they've led. 13 points. Embiid. And it's blocked. And that one goes out of bounds. Last touch by Plumley. Let's take another look at the staunch defense during that mobile one block. And just incredible timing and defensive awareness. I mean, when you face a defender that can reject you like this, it can alter your entire approach. And the 76ers making a change here. Dibbles checked in. the inbound. Here's Embiid. And Embiid throws it down. Yeah, a real versatile big man with multiple sweet spots out on the floor. Embiid is definitely on a roll. Detroit calls timeout. All right, Grant, you were the first rookie to ever lead All-Star fan balloting. That would have made you a team captain these days. So my question, who would be your first selection in the All-Star draft? Well, back then, no question. It would have been the GOAT, Michael Jordan. But today, hmm, it would have been today's GOAT, LeBron James. He just has the ability, whether a regular season game, playoff game, or even in an all-star game, to elevate the play of everyone who's on his team. So no question, Captain Hill would pick LeBron James. Such a front runner, Grant. Hey, come on now, you can't blame him. Let's take a look at the East. Taking a look at Philadelphia, they've been enjoying a truly spectacular run this season, sitting on top of the mountain in the first place spot. And of course, the Detroit Pistons, they're a ways down in the standings. Well, I think for Detroit, this is not where they wanted to be at this point in the season. It looks like there's a pretty sizable talent gap between them and the real contenders. And we've all thought this. They're just a middle-of-the-road team. The last thing anyone in the NBA wants to be. It's deflected! Bible with it. He's got five. Pass to Howard. Here's Embiid. Hands it from short range. Embiid's got 14 points. <laughs> I just love the ball move. Detroit has gone 0 for 3 from deep to begin the second. Back to right. Screen, 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 screen. 
And the layup is good off the glass. Wright's got his second bucket on the night. That's been the story of their offense so far. Getting a number of looks from point-blank range. Pass to Howard. Inside. Fires it. That's good from Embiid on the assist by Howard. He's got 16. And why go away from attacking inside if the D has no answer for you? Rose, the pass to Plumley. Rose with it. Out left to the wing. Jackson, left side. Griffin, a screen on Simmons. And at a certain point, you just have to look to someone else to score for you. And a foul called on the way up. So he'll take two from the free throw line. Well, Grant, the players definitely don't want a hard cap, but do you think it might make small market teams more competitive? And I'm asking you for the ownership version of Grant Hill, not the player Grant Hill. NBA, are you trying to get me in trouble here? <laughs> <laughs> nah, I, look, at the end of the day, the NBA business is doing well. Player contracts are at all-time high. You have owners with their teams. The valuations are going through the roof. Uh, so I don't think there's a real need for a hard cap in today's environment. Now that could be impacted by the Orlando bubble and the impact that that has financially. Uh, but over the course of the last few years, the basketball business model has been good, it's been sound, uh, and it's only moving up. I don't think there's a real need for a hard cap. I love it, in attack mode, drawing foul calls this quarter and getting to the free throw line. Out to the right wing. Right, outside. Pass to Okafor. Six on the shot clock. And there's the foul. It's on Joel Embiid. That's his third foul of the game. And that's his third foul. The chance you take leaving him in with two. Let's see if they'll sit him now until the half. Right. Six points for him. Here's Mikhailuk from deep. Called in by Curry. Pass to Harris for three. And so it looks like the Sixers will retain possession here. And a look now at the Detroit Pistons' upcoming schedule. On Monday, they'll be facing Bradley Beal and the Washington Wizards. And then on Wednesday, they'll be matching up against DeMar DeRozan and the San Antonio Spurs. This is going to be a really tough stretch of schedule for them. They've got a lot of road games coming down the pipe, and they have not had a lot of luck finding success on the court when traveling. Pass to Embiid. Just four to shoot. That one's good. He's now eight for 13. I'll tell you, I wouldn't want to be the guy who has to guard Embiid. I mean, you can body him up, get physical with him, and he still finds a way to score. Now here's Wright. Fader on the way. Misses off the right iron. And here's Milton. And here's Embiid. Knocked loose. Now here's Grant. He had 16 in the win against Chicago. He was a shot-blocking nightmare out there. Four blocks on the game and some altar shots as well. Now here's Wright. Picked by Okafor. Wright attacking. Just five to shoot. Grant. Another miss. They desperately need a bucket. The 76ers have gone 8 of 15 in the second. Harris finds Curry. Embiid with it. Harris outside. Shoots. Rebounded by the Pistons. Offensively, it's been a struggle for them. Yeah, they need to string together some shots to have any kind of chance. Pass to Bay. Over Harris. And it's Harris with the rebound. The defender took away the airspace, crowded him. That changed the shot. Here's Curry. In his last outing, eight points for him. Here's Milton. 
and Bay pulls it down. Well, Detroit's shooting only 23% so far. Grant, left side. Spins. Shoots over Thibel. It's tipped! Over right. The Sixers with another miss. And here's Detroit. Pass to Graham. Over Milton. And too long on the shot. Empty possession, and you don't want to miss these easy looks. And we know Joel Embiid knows that he's one of the best in the game. Love it when he challenges other stars and goes right at them on the floor. Embiid is a true superstar and super personality in the league. outside oh they need this Ooh, rejected by Harris great position on that play from Tobias challenging the shot and getting a piece of it it was a strong move the shots just a little off grand last season MB declared himself the best player in the league not many echoed that statement. Yeah, B.A., most fans and pundits will disagree with Embiid. It's hard to make a case for him. But that's the mentality Embiid has to have as a superstar. So who knows? In a few years, it might be true. And he knocks down the first one. The 76ers making a switch here. That one goes in. Two from the line that time. And something not many folks know about you, Grant. You're a terrific piano player. Oh, B.A., terrific? Oh, you're very kind in that. But yes, I can play the piano. I took piano lessons uh, growing up as a child. I hated them. My mother made me take them. I did quit once I got into high school. And now, later on in life, I love to play the music. I can't walk by a piano without sitting down and playing. And I'm wishing that I had stuck with it and I didn't quit back when I was 13 years old. Uh, but it's one of my great passions and hobbies and something I enjoy doing very much. Now here's right to the wing on the left. Pass to Okafor. Here's Mikhailuk. Five to shoot. Here's Bay, pounded by Harris. Philadelphia shooting just 42% so far in the game. Embiid with it. Okafor on him. For three, here's Harris. Buries it from three. Harris has got his first bucket of the game, and he's on the board for three. Well conceived play. The pass is right on time. Tobias catches in rhythm. Difficult set to defend. There's a four-second difference between the shot and game clock. Right with the ball. Oh, and there's the whistle on the shot. So two free throws for him coming up. And the first one at the line is good. And he makes the first, but misses the second. The three from Curry. That misses. Would have counted had it gone. So as we conclude the first half, a fairly one-sided game. 
Sixers ahead, delivering the blowout. All right, Allie's ready to go. She's courtside. Hey, Allie. Joelle, you hold the lead now, but how do you build on that as the game continues? Uh, just to keep being, uh, being aggressive. And I thought we did a good job defensively, so we just got to keep being aggressive and making plays. A lot of times, defense leads to offense. Thanks, Joelle. Thanks, Allie. Fantastic interview. We'll be back soon to start the second half of basketball. It's the 2K Sports Halftime Show. Hey, welcome back. The first half mercifully coming to a close. I'm Ernie Johnson. Kenny's here. Shaq is here. Joel Embiid having an outstanding game. He had 18 points, two assists, and a monster amount of rebounds. And from what we saw so far from the 76ers, Kenny, what's your takeaway? When Embiid plays like this, he's the best center in the league. The skill, the physicality, the attitude. He's not just out there to play well. He's looking to intimidate. And Shaq, what are your thoughts on Detroit? Hasn't been pretty anywhere for them. But I point to that we can tie defense more than anything else. They didn't protect the rim at all. And it's cost them, Ernie. And that's going to do it for our halftime show, sadly. Third quarter about to start. See you again after the final. Horn. Oh, buzzer. And with the second half upon us, we'll find out if this game becomes the route that it's threatening to be. What else can you say? Joel Embiid, an impressive effort here today. And given that he's just delivered a double-double through two quarters, I'm excited to see his stats at the end of the night. They're asking a lot of him, shouldering the load in a number of areas. You just hope he has enough left at the end. And with a big gap on the scoreboard, the second half begins with very different goals for these teams. One side trying to mount a comeback, one side trying to protect their lead. We've got Jeremy Grant, Blake Griffin out there with Mason Plumley. Then there's Derrick Rose, and it's Jackson in at the two. That's the five on the floor for the Pistons. Now here's Rose. Boy, he's been patient so far. Nothing yet on the scoreboard. Simmons finds Harris. Two points. That one goes. And just executing at a high level. I mean, taking what the defense allows and putting in the work. The reason why they stayed aggressive and they have not let up this entire night. And at this point, I wouldn't expect them to. And the Pistons with possession here. Following the score by Philadelphia. Here's Rose. Takes it inside. A rebound by Embiid. Embiid, the 76ers, shooting about 43% on this one. About a minute played here in the second half. Green for three. It's good. And a beautiful setup from Simmons that time. Simmons has got four assists now tonight. Rose outside. Pass to Jackson. Shoots over Thibel. He got a piece of it. They retain possession. That one's good for two. Philadelphia dictating the flow. Outside Simmons. Here's Embiid. Tipped! Now Jackson. As far as his production, he's averaging about eight points per game. Two minutes into the second half of play now. Looking to get it going. It's Philadelphia with the rebound. Bible's got rebound number five here tonight. This is how it's been so far. He's missed every shot he's taken, and the team is suffering the consequences. Now here's Harris. He's got five. Pass to Embiid. Five on the clock. Oh, a clear foul there on the missed shot. So he'll get a pair at the line. That one's on Rose. He can be such a physical force. It's so hard to keep Embiid from getting to the free throw line. And he 
he drops the first. And Embiid drops them both. A little under two and a half minutes gone by in the third quarter. Rose outside. Harris against Griffin. The layup misses. For Philadelphia, they've got two of three from the floor in this third quarter. Outside, Green. Embiid inside. He's checked by Plumley. Simmons against Rose. Pass to Griffin. There's the three. He can't get it to go. And Philadelphia the other way now. He's had a tough time getting it going. And he's put this team behind the eight ball. Simmons against Jackson. Simmons, no good. Out of character for him to miss that shot. Maybe just a little too casual there. Now Plumley, Pass to Griffin. Back to Plumley. Shot clock at six. From deep, Rose. That one is off. Good D by Simmons. Yeah, you know, nobody really considers Tobias Harris as an elite defender. But by all accounts, he's an above average one. Opposing teams know that he's one of the best defenders on their team. Detroit has gone 0 for 2 from outside here on the third. Boy, they need something to go to regain some confidence. No question. Way too many empty possessions for them. Pass to Rose. Griffin outside. Tries again. Philadelphia grabs the miss. Simmons has got six rebounds now in the game. I mean, he's staying aggressive, trying to regain his touch. But right now, he's hurting the team. Embiid with it. Defended by Griffin. Embiid's shot is good. Embiid's got 22. And Grant, a 6'11 wingspan for Tobias Harris. That's a big bonus for him on defense. It really is. I mean, and you combine that with Harris's lateral quickness, and you can see the effect he has. Most people gloss over his defense with the eye test, but all the numbers say that he's very much a positive on that end of the floor. The officials were right on top of that one. First free throw is good. You know, in high school, he won four state titles, voted college player of the year at Oklahoma. Blake Griffin, he's used to success. And that's good as he hits both shots. Philadelphia has gone one for two from outside the arc in this third quarter. Pass to Harris. Good on the bucket. Just another shot in his arsenal. Tobias with the mid-range jumper. Rose up top. Looking for his first basket still in this one. Now Griffin. Pounded by Harris. He shoots. No good off the glass. And for his offense, this has just been a brutal period. Here's Maxi. Pass to Harris. Up and in on the layup. Harris has got six in the quarter. Time and time again, they're creating good looks from close range. 
High post Plumley. Grant outside. Jackson outside. Right wing. Here's Rose. And it's Philadelphia with the rebound. You kind of wonder where his head's at. The shot selection hasn't been there. And of course, that one was just crazy. And it's Maxi missing. Detroit has gone 0 for 2 from outside here in the third. Pass to Rose. Now here's Griffin. Pounded by Harris. Detroit, no good that time either. I don't know how many shots he's missed this quarter, but they're going to have to find offense from someone else. Howard with a screen on Griffin. Harris. He goes up again. And the layup is up and in. Harris has got 11. A much different player here in the second half. He's taking advantage of what the defense allows. Pass to Jackson. Fires the three. Howard grabs the miss. Now the 76ers with it. They're on a 15-4 run. And here's Simmons. He's got seven. Most nights this shot would have been his, but the defender gave him just enough trouble. And keeping us updated from the sideline, Ali LaForce. With the adversity the league has faced recently, good thing the relationship between the players union and the league office is strong. That's not always been the case, but with leaders like Adam Silver and Chris Paul communicating and cooperating, guys, it's helped the NBA weather this challenging time. I love it. Good collaboration there. Good call, Ali. Thank you. For the Pistons, Okafor, he's checked in for Plumley. Mikhailu comes in for Jackson, and Wright subbed in for Rose. Here's Maxi. Well, he hasn't scored yet, but I'm sure that'll change. Here's Korkmaz. Doesn't go that time, and it's Detroit the other way. Right on the right side. Pass to Griffin. Jacks up a three. They get the rebound. And another shot. And the refs are going to rule that unnecessary contact. That's a flagrant one foul. Ooh, hard foul. Can't let him get away with that level of contact. That's a simple call for the officials to make. Everyone knows the league is cracking down on that kind of intimidation tactic. The first free throw is good. so he makes both from the line. And we've seen some good free throw shooting in the second half. Pass to Griffin. Let's the three fly. On target from range. This hasn't been his quarter. Just one of seven. Here's Harris. Defended by Griffin. Harris against Griffin. The Sixers again can't hit. Detroit has gone one of six from three-point range here in the third. Not the result they're looking for. Struggle is real. He's been way off with his shot all evening long. Here's Curry. Oh, and makes it with the kiss. And it gets even worse for them. I mean, he just waltzes down the lane, extending their advantage. Uh, not good. A uncontested shot at the rim. You have to compete at all times. Here's Griffin. 
Following the score by Philadelphia. Typically, around half of Curry's shots are from three. But he's really a threat from anywhere on the floor, Grant. Yeah, great point, B.A. He has a tremendous mid-range game. And we saw that from him back in college. He's really improved his shot off the dribble, too. And what you love is the confidence. This is a guy who believes everything he puts up is going in. And you know what? If I were him, I would, too. That free throw, no good. I love how hard he's playing, really since the break. All the defense can do at this point is foul him. And he's good on the second. The 76ers have gotten 7 of 16 shots to go so far in the third quarter. Pass to Harris. Three-pointer. Rebounded by Mikhailuk. And yeah, that old adage about being too wide open, not a thing. He just missed it. Here's Maxi, Looking for his first basket still in this one. Now here's Harris. Just five on the clock. The three is up. Having a shaky time from the floor, but his teammates have been picking up the slack. Detroit with the ball. Pass to Bay. Out to the right wing. Here's Mikhailu. Going inside. And the shot goes in. He has six. There's a minute 40 left in the third quarter. And here's Howard. Harris outside. Ooh, nice D from Okafor. And Detroit is shooting just 21% from the floor. Harris against Griffin. Over Harris. And misses it off the right side of the rim. Philadelphia has gotten only one three-pointer to fall here in the third. Five attempts. That's tipped. Ooh, Griffin with the steal. Now here's Wright. Not a lot of room. So it'll be two free throws. He was fouled in the act of shooting. He makes a first. Yeah, they're playing catch up at this point, but they've done a nice job at the free throw line here in the second half. And the 76ers making a change here. Both shots good from the strike. 54 seconds left in the third quarter. Now here's Curry. Pass to Howard. Here's Korkmaz. Offensive board. And then he throws it down. And that's why you don't give up on the glass. Man, his efforts well rewarded right there. Working hard, beating everyone to the ball. He does this night in and night out. Oh my goodness, his fifth foul. One more, and he's done for the evening. That free throw, no good. Oh. 
Good on the second one. Philadelphia has gone one of six from three-point range here in the third. Not the result they're looking for. About seven seconds separating the shot and game clocks. Embiid against Griffin. And Embiid throws it down. Putting consistent pressure on this defense. Just the threat of him out there makes this offense work. Griffin outside. Three seconds left. Can't capitalize inside. And as we conclude the third, pretty much a blowout here. It's been a one-sided affair. Sixers ahead, running away with this one. We've got more in store for you right after this. And now we have a moment to reveal our State Farm assist of the game. And I'll tell you what, this was a no-brainer tonight. Take a look at the precision on this feed. Couldn't place it any better. This is why you preach teamwork. Some of the most spectacular plays are the ones where guys are feeding off one another. And as we head into the fourth, we'll see if there's a comeback in the works or if it's more of the same for the first three quarters. Taking a look at Philadelphia. We've got Furkan Korkmaz. He's out there with Matisse Thibel. Shake Milton out there with Tony Bradley. And it's Poirier in at the power forward position. Korkmaz, no good. Pass to Hayes. And Grant, when you were playing, the game was a lot more physical. Do you miss those days? Maybe not as a player, but do you miss watching that brand of basketball? You know, I, I do miss a little bit of that time. It, it, there was a physicality that required a mental toughness to endure that. When you played against some of these teams, like the first team that comes to mind, the New York Knicks with Charles Oakley and Patrick Ewing, you were going to feel it at the end of that game. Uh, but there was just a, a fun time for me as a young player in this league. And, of course, anything I could do to be back out on the court playing, even in the physicality of the 1990s. I'd be happy to stick an elbow in your back if that would make you feel better. <laughs> okay, uh, Brian Oakley. I like that. <laughs> Here's Cork Moss. Here's Bradley. And Bay pulls it down. It's a shot you would think he would make. But he just doesn't make it all the time. Pass to Makai Luke. Here's Hayes. To the inside. And that one's good. Stewart. Great timing and coordination. Lays it in coming off that pick. The 76ers have gone one of four since the fourth quarter began. Here's Poirier. Outside Tybal. That one's wide left. Well, Detroit shooting just 21% from the floor. They're searching for a way to score. Yeah, buckets have been very tough to come by. Philadelphia dictating the flow. A great fourth quarter, just giving up two points. Back to Milton. Dybal on the wing. Six to shoot. Trying to finish out the game strong. You have to recognize who has the hot hand and get him the ball. Here's Hayes. And there's a whistle. He'll head to the line to shoot two. You know, Grant, a few years ago, the NBA moved up the trade deadline to before All-Star Weekend. So it's had some effects. The trade deadline is earlier. There's the buyout market involved as well. Teams really can change their roster in different ways now. Yeah, they really can change their roster, and that's important for teams as they prepare for the stretch run ending the season post-All-Star weekend. But the bottom line, I think it helps the GMs and the front offices because you know what? They can enjoy their All-Star weekend now. Before, 
they had to wait till after All-Star Weekend to execute a trade. They get it done now, and then now they can enjoy their week off during the All-Star break. Ah, now we get the real story. <laughs> Very nice. He's perfect from the line this time. And if you're just joining us, fourth quarter here. We're just over two and a half minutes into it. Here's Maxi. Here he goes. Hit his foot. And the ref saying he kicked it. Pass to Milton. Misses from close range. Detroit has gone 0 for 2 from outside here in the fourth quarter. Here's Bay. Lays it up and banks it in. Well, the analytics would say take either that shot or something from downtown. Here's Maxi. Pass to Milton. Into the lane. Rebounded by the Pistons. He really can't buy a bucket, but his teammates have his back. To the right side. A little over three and a half minutes in the books now in this fourth quarter. Here's Stewart. Shot clock at five. Over to the left wing. Here's Magruder. Another shot. And he sinks the layup. And it really took a while, but they've started to find their form. And this run's making the deficit look a little bit more respectable. Outside Dival, down low. To stop the drought, Bradley. That's good. One sign of a great playmaker, hitting his man in stride. For Detroit, they've gotten three of seven attempts in this fourth quarter to fall. There's a screen. Hayes attacking. And he got the whistle on the way up. So he'll be headed to the line for a pair. Well, Grant, we saw a big change to the NBA All-Star format in 2020. You were on the call of that game. What was your take on the new setup? The new setup worked to perfection. And I have to, I have to admit, B.A., I was a little bit nervous and a little skeptical about this new format. But it worked. The players were competitive in the fourth quarter. The fans in the arena, the broadcasters, people at home, everybody was on the edge of their seat watching this uh, battle go back and forth where ultimately Team LeBron's team won the game. Uh, I'll tell you what, though. It speaks about the NBA's willingness to be creative, to be innovative, and not be stuck in so-called tradition uh, as the game has evolved and changed through the years. So kudos to the NBA, but also to the players for making it a memorable All-Star Weekend. Something that's here to stay. I agree. They've got a commanding lead. It just seems like everything is going their way. Outside Milton. Embiid inside. Plumley on him. The putback. It's good on the putback. Shooting at a high clip, he's found ways to get quality looks. Detroit has gone 0 for 2 from outside here in the fourth quarter. Hayes with it. Grant outside. Pass to Griffin. Uses the glass to finish the layup. Griffin's got 11 in the second half. They're improving, but still... Fires at the elbow. That went off the back iron and out. Now Hayes. Grant outside. Here's Plumley. To the wing, right side. Shot clock at six. Here's Jackson. And he makes it on the layup. <laughs> this run has been fueled by their Matador defense. Philadelphia shooting just 38%. Their offense not where they want to be. Pass to Harris. And he's going for the oop here. Stolen away. Nice job to interrupt the alley-oop attempt. Jackson right side. 
Beyond the arc. Hits the three. And so here is Philadelphia. Now here's Embiid. And Embiid throws it. <laughs> Crashes the glass with authority, then puts it back strong. Next level, man. This guy's just going out and making a play. Time called here. The Pistons decide to talk it over. Coach really needs to get his guys fired up in attacking the glass. They're not putting up much of a fight, and it's led to way too many second-chance shots. Player of the game, Joel Embiid. And I'll tell you what, this was one easy pick for sure. From the start, he looked in total control for the entire game. It's incredible to see a player outperforming everyone else on the court. Boy, it's not hard to be blown away by his level of play. It's never easy winning on the road, but to do it in this fashion, that's a special performance right there. Out to the right wing. Griffin right side. To the wing on the left. Now here's Jackson. The D's right on him. Missed inside. And the 76ers shooting 27% here in the fourth. For three, here's Harris. Here's Embiid. Embiid. That one's good. And the assist by Harris. And he was dominant in their last outing. And the same thing here tonight. He is in a terrific groove right now. Here's the thing. He's a guy who will go on hot streaks for you over a number of games. Oh, Harris with the block. Here's Simmons. Pass to Harris. And he lobs it up to the rim. And then Embiid with the dunk. And just a huge exclamation point on that finish. Embiid never turns down an opportunity to intimidate the opponent. But he's got one of three to fall from downtown here in the fourth. Pass to Jackson. Now, Grant, you were involved in a sign and trade deal from Detroit to Orlando, but you don't see that tactic as much anymore. You know, you really don't, B.A., but there's a reason for that. First and foremost, players today have a lot more control over their destiny. And also, teams are not going to wait until an elite player is in their final year and they don't have a firm commitment and belief that that player will resign. In a lot of cases, teams will trade that elite player before he enters his last year of his deal for fear that they may lose him for nothing in free agency. 
No good on the free throw. He hits the second from the line. And Philadelphia has possession. Simmons with it. Outside. Green. Here's Embiid. Oh, a beautiful reverse layup. Embiid's got 18 points in just the second half. His nimbleness makes him a unique threat at the rim. Rose outside. Pass to Jackson. Out of bounds. It'll go to the Sixers. And Philadelphia has possession. Simmons, the pass to Embiid. Embiid drawing the double team. Here's Green. Lays it up and in on the nice reverse. Nice look for Danny Green there, taking charge. You love the leadership he's brought everywhere he's gone. Pass to Griffin. Back to Rose. And here's Griffin. Well, with more players now going straight from high school to the G League and overseas. Grant, you think it's finally time to end the one-and-done system? B.A., it is time. You know, back in 2005, when they incorporated the one-and-done system, NBA teams didn't have the infrastructure to deal with younger players entering the league. A lot has changed, of course, since then. Now teams have player development staffs. They, they have more capable of helping players on and off the court as they adjust to becoming professionals in the NBA. So the time is ready. I love the option of the G League, but I think opening up the doors and eliminating the one and done needs to happen for the NBA. And the 76ers going with a whole new group out there. He's off on the second. And here are the 76ers. They're on a 12-4 run. Here's Maxi To the middle. Here's Bradley. Oh, and he got fouled on his way up. He'll head to the line to shoot two. First one falls, and Smitty, the triple-double used to be a rarity. Why are we seeing so many triple-doubles these days? You know, B.A., the pace is faster. So what that ultimately does, it gives you more possession, and that ultimately leads to more stats. So I think that's the reason why we see more triple-double. And let's be honest, these guys are more versatile. And when you start talking about versatile, that means guys that can do it all. He makes one or two that time. For Detroit, they've gone 7 for 15 in the fourth. Now Hayes. Pass to Stewart. 149 left in the fourth quarter here. Six on the shot clock. Driving in, Magruder. Fourier with the rebound. Philadelphia has gone 0 for 3 here in the fourth. Here's Maxi. Here's Korkmaz. Knocks it down from distance. Korkmaz has gotten himself going here. His first points of the game on the deep ball. Detroit has gone one for five from downtown here in the fourth. And what a complete performance we saw from them. A dominant win in every way for the 76ers. Pretty clear who the better team was today. They dominated in just about every phase of this game, Grant. 
<laughs> B.A., it's almost hard to think what didn't go well for them. Their plan, their execution, everything was absolutely on point. As usual, terrific effort from him. Unwilling to let the possession go to waste. Right wing. Here's Bradley. It's wide right, hits off the rim. That was the best he could do. Just fade a little bit, try and get a clean look, but the defense was right on him. Pass to Magruder. There's 38 seconds left in the fourth. Over to the wing. Here's Bay from behind the arc. Bradley grabs the board. Here's Maxi. Fifteen seconds left in the fourth quarter here. And here's Hayes. So no problem for Philadelphia as they get the win. A statement road victory. So impressive. Statement indeed, B.A. It was in enemy territory, but they controlled the game and took the crowd completely out of it. That's how you win on the road. All right, let's send it down to Ali LaForce, who's with our player of the game. Joel, in the past, you've certainly had your critics, and you have not run from them. What are you looking to prove out there? Oh, uh, just being dominant, so I want every time people hear my name, I want them to know that I'm a dominant player. Well, you do have the ability to dominate every single night. Good luck moving forward. All right, Allie, good stuff there. Thanks for that. And that about wraps it up. For Allie LaForce, Grant Hill, and Steve Smith, this is Brian Anderson with our 2K Sports crew signing off. We'll see you next time.